Namaste and welcome back to Grow with the Jan family. I'm Anjali. Hum achin hey, kaise hey. And today we're going to be reacting to another Sadguru. Um, we've done a few of his other videos and I feel like he is so wise. And he, um, I don't know, I just love the way he says it. It's very yeah. like slow peaceful. and peaceful, but it's so, I find his, his message so true and so easy to connect with your own life and um, yeah. just so much knowledge in that man. So I'm glad to be doing another said guru right now. And um, the person who's kind of interviewing him, it's, is there a bias for the beef ban? And um, Barkada Dutt is uh, kind of interviewing him on this one. Mm. And I know her views and Sadhguru's views are like completely opposite. My husband, you know, he said she's a little bit more liberal and, you know, whereas he is like Sadhguru. I don't know what else to call yeah. him. So um, this will be interesting, you know, because I don't think too much shakes him, you know, even if he does get questioned. he's He always seems um, very... Calm, calm cool and collective and wise in his knowledge so i'm ready to start it up anji yeah let's go Times when faith and spirituality have become very inflammable. Don't and put them in the same basket. <laughs> okay, let's talk about faith first. Mm -hmm. We live in times when faith for certain has become a very inflammable, easily politicized conversation. If faith should have been personal today, it's not. Today you actually have decisions taken in the name of somebody's faith being injured. So you mentioned food right now. I read somewhere that you said there's nothing religious about the act of food, just eat what you like. No, 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 I didn't eat say that. Eat what's good for you? I said eat what's good okay, for you. Okay, eat what's good for it's you. It's a very different thing. Okay, I correct myself. <laughs> eat what's good for you. But today we have a highly politicized conversation around banning beef in the name of faith. It's definitely How? not good for you to eat it. Beef or any meat? I'll come to that. Okay. okay, so I'm offering that as one example of how I see a politicized conversation taking place around faith. How do you reconcile the faith of a large number of people with questions of individual liberty? I know I have read that you like books written by Salman Rushdie. We were the first country to ban him again in the name of faith. How do we reconcile faith with individual liberty? See, uh, it's always been said, uh, faith moves mountains. Yes, but it freezes your mind. <laughs> but the greatest crime you can do on this planet is to move a mountain. You should not move a mountain, it should be where it is. It is not just dropped from somewhere, it's grown because of various forces functioning in a particular way. Phenomenal activity has happened to build a mountain. You should never move a mountain. <laughs> but people with frozen minds always want to move a mountain. Okay, having said that, when we say faith, yeah. it's an import for this culture. We have never had faith in this culture. You must look back little beyond thousand years since we've been under occupation. Here we have been told always, your life is your karma. Mm -hmm. so karma true. means action. Whose action? Your action. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what we are saying is your life is entirely your making. There is no someone sitting up there and managing this for you. This is entirely yours. But for every action that you perform, whether physical, mental, emotional, energy-wise, whatever kind of action you perform, there is bound to be a consequence. If you're ready for the consequence, do whatever. If you're going to cry about the consequence, control the action right now. Based on this, now you came to food. See, the food consumption has been looked at very carefully in this country. If you just bring this back, the world will be healthy, do you understand? Mm. Here we have identified different type of people, what they should eat. If you're doing menial jobs, how you should eat. If you're doing trading, how you should eat. 
If you are into spiritual process, how you should eat? If you are into education, how you should eat? Why this is, is each person needs a different type of building of the body. You want to run hundred meters uh, next to Mr. Bolt, what kind of food you should eat? You just want to work in Delhi, what kind of food you should eat? You want to think in a certain way, what kind of food you, t you should eat? For all these, we have very clear prescriptions. Now, when it comes to food, what it means is, we are taking another life, whatever that is, it may be plant life, animal life, whatever. You're taking another life, ingesting it and you have to make it your life, that's a whole thing. Mm. What is your life, what is that life, if you look at it? All life on this planet is coming from the earth. Mm. This body is also the same soil, this is also the same soil, if there is an earthworm, that is also same soil. But see how it has become, how this has become, how that has become. If I give you… you like a mango or a banana? Mango. Mango <laughs> I know, you're, you're ruling the state right now <laughs> Now, if you eat a, ma a mango, this mango becomes a woman in you. If I eat a mango, the same mango becomes a man in me. If a cow eats a mango, the same mango becomes a cow in the cow. Why is this happening? There is a certain information or software in you, whatever you eat, it transforms it into a woman. If I eat, it transforms it to a man. If a cow eats, that becomes a cow. So every life is happening the way it is happening because of a certain dimension of information or in modern terminology, let's call it software. Mm. There is a certain software, mm. which is an arrangement of yeah. information. Mm. Now, the idea is, to eat as simple a software as possible. If you eat that kind of life, which is a very simple software, your ability to override that software and make it entirely a part of you is very good. As that software gets com complex, more yes. and more complex, yes. your ability to integrate it goes down. Mm. So especially if it's a creature which has some sense of thought and emotion, if it has emotion, then you should not eat it. This is the understanding. Mm. An animal which has any emotion displays certain emotions, especially if it displays emotion which is near to human emotion, you should not eat it because it will not integrate itself, that animal nature will start manifesting itself. Or in other words, in India, today maybe in cities people do not know, you see in the villages, people have very intimate relationship with the cow. Yeah. Yeah. They have drunk the milk of that cow, their children are drinking the milk of that cow. There is a very deep relationship. If you do not know this, cow is one creature. If something happens to you and you are in some kind of grief or misery, you don't have to be near the cow. Wherever the cow is in your house, it will st it'll start shedding tears for you. <laughs> you know, I've seen this with my eyes, I couldn't believe. When somebody is dead in the house, it… what does a cow know? It is somewhere, simply tears flowing. So when it has such deep emotions, if you kill it, it's like killing a human being, it's murder or it's cannibalism. So because of that, this is not a faith thing, mm. this is not a religious thing. We thought this is a fundamental sense. Why… You see, when we are hungry, why can't I cut you up and eat you? What's wrong? <laughs> What's wrong? But what, but what you're saying should be about many more animals than just the yes, cow. Yes, yes, of course. And you bec when it becomes about only the cow, then there is a… there is certainly a perception it, it is not that it is a political decision or a mm. religious decision. <laughs> no, no, I'm not talking about the… whatever the laws… This is not happen. about uh, people getting up and saying it's cruel to be… Uh, to be a meat eater. That… W that would be a different argument. Mm. I'm not even talking about cruelty, even cutting a plant is cruel in my experience. Mm. But you have to do it. But if you're conscious of it, you will do it to the minimum possible extent, not do it wantonly. Mm. That's the whole thing. Now about this political ban about cow slaughter or whatever. This has many things. One thing is there is a sensitivity. Once you drink milk from the cow, she's like your mother. Killing your mother and eating her up is something people cannot digest in this country. Still eighty percent of the people belong to that category and they're… they're hugely… there's a huge emotion, such a emotion which because they've always been made to be docile in a certain way, they have not violently react, reacted to it. Mm. But in some places, it has happened in villages and other places, there is already a beef ban in many villages just by a norm, mm -hmm. not by any law. Yeah. 
that you don't bring these kind of th things into the village. I am not saying you must ban it or not ban it, I am saying the sensitivities of your population, you without considering, you can't go do this blatantly. Because it is growing, it's becoming a growing business, India is becoming a major exporter of beef. Yes. That's not right. Yes. Even if somebody ate something, it is up to them, it's their personal taste, whatever. Mm -hmm. But now you're promoting it and you're making it grow, there is serious concern, but our people don't express it. Our people don't go out on the street and not going to kill anybody because they killed a cow. So, ban is not what is needed, more education was needed rather than banning. Okay. But it's you haven't point. spoken to what happens when faith… Faith repeatedly seems to come into conflict with individual liberty. Bo ba the banning of books. There were people killed in Paris because they were seen to have mocked, uh, uh, you know, it, the Prophet Muhammad and so on. So, so where you, does this end? Where do we stop violence and politics in the name if of you, religion? If you want that to stop, you must understand this. You're saying, today, today, it's not today. In the last two thousand years, this is the history of the world. <laughs> Continuously it's happening all over the world. Suicide bombers are a new phenomenon. Well, you've forgotten about the crusades and the other things which have not been reported in history. Right. Hundreds of millions of people have been killed in the name of God, all right? Mm -hmm. It's new to us here, but even here, uh, thousands, hundreds and thousands have been slaughtered in northern part of India just because the faith that they belong to when the invasions happened. Right. Nobody writes about it because we never took the pen and wrote, somebody wrote history for us the way they like it. Because all history is sponsored by kings, they wrote the history the way they want and they said they're great emperors. But what they did was absolutely terrible. So you need to understand, faith is a new thing to us. When I say new, in this country which has twelve, fifteen thousand years of uh, history behind us, thousand years is new for us, we've still not come to terms with it, we're still struggling with it. But struggling within ourselves, not creating a struggle on the street because that's not our nature because here always we've been drilled into us, whatever you do, there will be a consequence for you. Even if you come back another life, another life, it won't leave you, it will come back to you. Right. This has been told, this controls people, this is, a t this is a tremendous technology, please understand this. And it's not simply a fake thing, it is a real thing. Everything that you think, feel, act, there is a consequence. Not because there is somebody thinking he must give gift, uh, give you a reward or a punishment, it happens in your own chemistry. So I thought this was a really great video. Yeah. What did you like best about this so video? So what I liked best about it was the cows and how they basically treat them like we treat our dogs, like family. Mm -hmm. Like we treat our dogs like family. They're basically like big dogs and how he said like if someone died, even if the cows it was a while, like, they there shed would be tears, tears yeah. down the cow's face. That was like... I had never heard of anything no. like that. I know animals get sad when people die. Yeah. Um, especially when uh, it's another animal, like a packed, like with the dogs, yeah. like a packed brother. But I know like when um, humans are sick and their dogs are with them by their bedside, like mm. when you're not feeling good. Yeah. But if they die, I know that the, it's hard for the dogs. It is. Um, yeah, daddy used to say... You know, the cows, he would go out and, you know, kind of say hi to them every morning, rub their head, and, yeah. and they look at you, and he said they have different, um, you know, each each sound they make is different, some is more of a you greeting. You can, like, tell, like yeah. dogs, like, you can, like, tell if it's more of, like, a whimper, or if it's more of, like, a back away. Right. He's like, you can tell the difference in their body language if they want to fight you, yeah. or if they want you to rub their head, and he's like... You know, you he's like they'll they'll let you milk the take the milk from them. Yeah. And he's like and you know, he said sometimes the families have to separate and mm. he said, you know, his family they had to separate at one point to go different places and the cows didn't wanna separate from each Aww. other. And he's like, I tried and then I was like, Well, they wanna be together, you 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 know, you take them. So they do have a special bond. They really yeah. are smart animals and they're, they're, they are like family pets, you yeah. know. And there are a lot of animals, like the monkeys we were watching, the 
You know, they are so, so cute. cute. You know, there's a lot They're of like different little humans. Yeah. And um, so I see where he gets that. Um, you know, they're like family. They're like yeah. people or dogs or pets. They're they're they become part of you. And um, I liked when he said about the emotion behind yeah, it. Yeah, the you emotion know, like behind it. If they understand, you know, fear and pain and you suffering, eat them. then you shouldn't eat them. The other interesting thing I I liked he talked about was um, how your body digests stuff and how your body yeah. processes it. It's kind of like a computer a little bit and Mm -hmm. um you know it breaks it down so the more complex things the harder your body takes time to break it down yeah and you know science has always taught us that like meats always take longer to digest than than vegetables and grains and but the way he says it's completely different. Completely you know? different, yeah. Um, we, in a good way. Right, in a good way. Like, your body can't process that. There's a reason for that. You probably yeah. shouldn't be eating it. It's not good for you, no. right? Um, we don't eat beef, so no. um, we do eat a little chicken and fish once in a while, um, mostly eggs and, and beans and mm-hmm. vegetables. And But the way he puts it, is so enlightening like even then you think other animals you think yeah you know oh i you know we ate chicken today crap <laughs> maybe you know you think about the animals and how yeah. they feel and um you know she also she tried to bring in a lot of she really questioned him mm-hmm. and i loved his answers when she really tried to like pick at him a little bit cause, yeah because he he his answer was so um like like a dig to her like kind of insulting her a little bit but, but in not a nice actually way. saying her name right you know he was she you know was talking about politics and um religion and yeah and you know the ban and and he she was really trying to get him to like give a straight answer and i don't think Sadhguru gives any straight answers no. but she really tried to poke at him and his he was like well you don't move the mountain, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> that I just, that was my favorite analogy, like, you know, people, you don't move the mountain, and so, like, it, it's there, it grew there. It's kind it, of like it was born there. Exactly, like, you know, it was born there, it, it grew there, it has a reason for being there, yeah. it, it evolved in a certain way. Yeah. You don't move it. No. You know, so I thought that was funny how, you know, he kind of, when she tried to dig at him, he he gave her a nice answer, but it was kind of a dig back. Yeah. But in a nice way. Um, you know, just, this was really interesting yeah. from, from Sadhguru point. And, um, but he does bring up a good point. Like, yeah. you know, he did address a little bit the ban and and why as a culture, as the way they've been brought up, not as a faith, yeah, but as the way they've been brought up that they don't kill cows because they're part of the family, because mm-hmm. they give milk to you like your mother does and yeah. they feed it to their children. And, you know, it's more of a cultural thing. And why would you... You know, other people want to eat it. Like you said, you eat what you want to eat. That's yeah. your karma. You you deal with the consequences in the end if it doesn't digest well for you. Um, but don't give your own family to other people to kill them. Right. So they, I guess, are talking about sending cows to other countries or other yeah. places that then to make money Mm -hmm. and then they're slaughtering those cows to feed people and it is it's like a instead of you killing your own family member you're giving it to someone else you're selling it to someone else you're selling Anjali to another country so that they can kill her like you know what I mean that's not that's not the message right so you don't want to you personally decide that you don't want to eat meat or, and that's fine. And that's okay. And if somebody else wants to eat meat, he said, that's okay. That's on you. Yeah. Uh, you eat what makes you feel good, what is good for you. But let them grow their own cows. Let if them... that's what they want to do, you yeah. grow your own cows and you, you kill them to eat them. That, But 
India as a whole because of the way they believe in the culture that they they've been raised on they, that is not what they want to pro, you know that's not yeah. what you want to say like yes we're gonna go you know make a lot of money so we're gonna sell our cows like would you sell your family member for a lot of money no no so so it kind of goes against everything yeah everything like when i realized what he what she was kind of getting at Mm -hmm. i was like yeah they wouldn't why would you basically promote them selling the cows to promote killing the cows so that other people can eat them yeah (laughs) yeah not not good so um but Sadhguru is wise in many ways, and we yes. will definitely do more by Sadhguru. And uh, Daddy has some videos on Barka Dutt and some of her views, which I know are com- from the way she was questioning him. I can tell she's completely on the other page yeah. of him. So that will be interesting. Um, we'll do those later. But um, did you have anything else you wanted to say, Anjali? No. All right. I hope you guys like this video. Don't forget to click that subscribe button down below. And join our wonderful family. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.